This webinar gives a brief overview of the wizard feature, which is available in the Kingdom Valpac 2016 release. We'll be looking at one aspect of the wizard in a live demo to give you a flavour of how the wizard works. Lots of other functionality is available, and as you'll see, the wizard makes it very easy to explore the data within your Valpac model. The wizard sits on top of the workflow and manual methods for using the software and provides quick and easy to use predefined depth conversion methods and most of the popular techniques used by our customers are covered with the wizard. It also provides an ideal introduction to depth conversion and core Valpac functionality. The workflow system provides a broader range of techniques than the wizard with more choice of methods and parameterization. Workflows must be used for uncertainty and risk reduction analysis and of course workflows are very customizable and shareable. Manual methods, using the software GUI directly, provides the full range of pre-built techniques and user-defined methods. It gives you precise control over every step of analysis in the depth conversion and complete customization of parameters, mapping methods, mapping parameters, and so on and so forth. So what features do the wizard give to the user? Well, we have well-apparent or pseudo-interval velocities, which is allows us to define functions based on these uh, values or we can map them. We can use the well velocity logs such as sonics or check shots for function derivation and of course we can use seismic velocities which we can use for direct depth conversion or we can integrate and scale those to the well velocities and depth convert. Uh, we have mapping and smoothing options and also we have pseudo well generation, so we can generate well based functions based on seismic velocity functions, which is a nice powerful technique. You can of course mix and match the wizard, manual methods and the workflow system within the model, or often it's easy to use the wizard to prepare data for manual methods or, or workflow based methods. We'll move on to the live demo now. The prerequisites for using the wizard are that data has been loaded into the model and layer definition has been performed. It's usually a good idea to QC the data for each well in the well module. The testing different methods using the wizard can be used to identify problems in the well data very quickly. The model I am using is the base model from the tutorial dataset provided with the software. Please refer to the tutorial documentation for its whereabouts if you wish to locate this on disk and follow this demo along with me. It's a three layer model and layer definition has been performed to correlate the formation tops in depth with the time grid interpretations. As we can see on the well display here. With everything in place, we can open up the wizard from the main icon toolbar here. It is often useful to detach the wizard window from the main window because as the wizard runs, it generates useful displays and so you don't want the, the wizard window blocking those displays. So I'm going to detach the wizard window and park it to the left of the display. The first page of the wizard is the launching page. Below the usual icon strip, which we will visit later, is an overview of the current state of the model, one row per layer in the model. In this case, it's a new model and so no parameters have been defined. Each page in the wizard has a help screen. On the launch page, the help screen is docked below the table. Uh, subsequent pages it's, it's parked to the right. We can use the help button to show or hide the help overview to save on screen real estate. We launch the wizard options by clicking on the run icon for the appropriate layer. In this case we need to depth convert our first layer first so we click on the run button for layer 1 and the wizard changes. 
I'll just expand out this so we can see the help screen. The help screen gives an overview of the methods available. So here we see we have options for curve fitting, mapping, optimization, sonic log methods, seismic velocity methods, and user methods, where you just plug in predefined parameters for certain types of depth conversion equations. These may have been given to you by external sources. We'll start by looking at the curve options. And these are used to analyze time depth relationships based primarily on well velocity data. I'm going to collapse the uh, help screen for the time being so we can just see more on the screen. So I press next on the wizard. A data verification screen appears for each option in the wizard. This validates that there is sufficient data in the model to use the selected option. If there is insufficient data, the next button is disabled and the only option is to press the previous button to go back and select a different option. Here we have the required information, so we can press next to continue. We have four options for curve fitting, details of which can be seen in the help screen. So I'll expand the window out again and we can review the, the help screen option. So for example, um, we can do an average velocity versus time to basic layer method. Here's a little diagram explaining how these velocities are computed. Uh, here's the interval velocity versus depth to middle of layer option, and so on and so forth. So you have full information about what the function is going to do. I'm going to collapse that help screen and reduce the window size. I'm going to use the interval velocity versus depth to middle of layer option. So I select this function and press the generate function button. And the curve display is, is shown. So I'm going to detach the curve display and park it over here. I'll just shrink the surface map down so we can see a better bit. Now because we only have a few well samples, what I'm going to do is turn on the show labels button and regenerate the function. And so for each well, on the regression plot, we can see the, the well name. So let's review this curve display. Um, it's clear that well 4815A9 um, has a much deeper midpoint depth with higher interval velocity than the other wells. If this is incorrect, uh, we can click on the well to deselect it. So I can simply left click on that sample to deselect it. Notice the regression line is automatically recomputed. However, I need to press the generate function button again to ensure that the changes are fully committed throughout the model. However, in this case, I know this well is in fact deeper and the data is valid, so I will reselect it by just simply clicking on the deselected point. Note that if you do turn a well off, it stays off for all other analyses for that layer but it remains on for other layers in the model. So I'll update, generate the function. If we now look at the surface display, and I set it to a basic display using this icon here, so it can read the values posted more clearly, um, we can see values posted at each well location within the grid area with numbers. The posted values are the mistie values, that is the difference between the well formation top depths and the depths predicted by our depth conversion function. Note that at this point we haven't actually made a depth surface. So we can see, as we'd expect, well 48144 up here, which is further away from the regression line than the other samples, has the largest error. Here it's 25.78 meters. The other errors are minus 4.5 meters, minus 10.93 meters, minus 11 meters, and 0.35 meters. So as you'd expect, wells further away from the regression line generate bigger errors. So we might want to investigate if that well is indeed correct, whether the interpretation or the formation tops have been mispicked, for example. But um, in this case, uh, we're not going to that level of detail. We're just having a look at an overview of the wizard. 
Let's try a different regression, such as um, something like an isopac versus isochron method. Select the method in the wizard and press the generate function button. The curve and surface displays are updated. We can see a, a very different looking regression line. It looks far more convincing. But if we actually inspect the error values, again, they're what we'd expect to see. 4814 is somewhat off compared to the other values. Now, I always prefer to use a velocity depth based function. So I'm going to revert back to the interval velocity versus depth to middle of layer function. Press the generate function button to update the model. When the function and the well data set has been decided, I can then press the next button in the wizard to actually do the surface depth conversion using this regression line. The depth surface is now displayed in the surface map for review along with the mistie values. So we can set it to basic, look at the mistie values, set it to shaded, to show the depth surface again. Now, you may wish to generate a mistie grid to apply to the depth converted surface to force the depth grid to tie the well tops. This can be done in the wizard. In fact, the very next page in the wizard asks us for whether we wish to do error correction for event one. We can toggle on the generate error grid button to enable this. The wizard uses simple Krieging to generate the correction grid, so all that you need to do is specify a Krieging range. Now the wizard computes the range as half the longest diagonal of the time grid. So let's see what this looks like with the default parameters. So I just press generate error correction grid. Some processing happens. And the residual error cor correction grid is plotted on the surface map for us. In this case I'd like a much more localized correction area so I'm going to say maybe two kilometers so I enter 2000 meters in the dialog and generate the error correction grid for that and here we can see we can have much more localized uh, kind of bullseye corrections um, which is something I favor with this particular data set. So when you have just designed the error correction grid to your satisfaction, simply a case of pressing the next button to apply this to the depth conversion. The new depth grid will tie the well formation tops and the interval and average velocity grids which are recomputed take into account this error correction. The final depth grid is displayed on the surface map and the associated grids are stored in the model tree. So we can open up the grids folder for our first layer and look at the final interval velocity grid, average velocity grid which should look much the same, the layer 1 and there's our depth grid. So all of the data is stored in the model tree for subsequent review. Now the wizard has finished so we can press previous to go back and retry different steps or adjust the error correction as we see fit or we can press next to go back to the wizard launch page. And what we see in the wizard, we can see a, a brief summary of the method we've used. So we've used curve fitting and an interval velocity versus depth to the middle of layer function, simple linear function, and there's the intercept and gradient for that regression line here. So if we were happy with that, we could then move on to run the wizard for event 2. We might want to use the same method, we want to, might want to use a completely different method for the depth conversion. If you wish to redo layer 1, we can actually do that easily enough. We can use the replay button and it'll ask us whether we want to use replay the curve fitting for event 1. I'm not going to do that, but you can rerun easily at any time. This is useful if you add wells to the model or you tweak the interpretation somewhat. Um, you just re-import the wells or re-import the interpretation. Just rerun the wizard to put the model back to this, uh, a clean initial state. You can use the reset button to erase all of the depth conversions and wizard history and replay files. 
or you can actually uh, edit if you wish to choose so you can edit the replay run files and run them directly using this run button this is this is a, a rarely used feature um, in the current release but you'll see how we use it in future releases so we can then uh, subsequently do layer 2 and then run layer 3 until our model has been depth converted so that's an overview of how the wizard works very simple very intuitive lots of on-screen help as to the details of the parameters used for each depth conversion method. So thank you for watching this webinar. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at equipoisesoftware.com. You can also check our website www.depthconversion.com for more webinars on software features or alternatively check our YouTube channel Equipoise Software. Thank you once again.